Hey everyone, it's Amel and you're watching Newsbreak. The floods in New South Wales have today been declared a natural disaster by the federal government. There have been more than 100 evacuation orders affecting tens of thousands of people. Here's Nat. So last night we, we got a message from SES that a flood was coming. So we kept looking at the windows and uh, just the water started to come up really fast and at about two in the morning we were just watching the water and it was like the whole street was covered. Farouk is just one of the thousands who have been on high alert as rescue efforts continue in Sydney. The New South Wales SES has been busy, delivering people to safety, working through the night. Some of the damage is already showing in places where the water's gone down, but authorities are asking people to be aware of flash flooding, which can happen when rivers overflow and there's a lot of water very quickly. The Prime Minister, who's been in Europe meeting with world leaders and visiting Ukraine, is now on his way home, tweeting out that the federal government's doing everything it can to help. The government's also declared the situation a natural disaster, meaning people in affected areas can now get access to special emergency relief funding. Meanwhile, off the coast of Sydney, this large bulk carrier ship has been left stranded after one of its engines failed. Tugboats have been sent in to help so that the ship doesn't drift too close to the cliffs. And after a not so successful helicopter rescue mission, the people on board have been told that the only option now is to wait out the bad weather, which we can only hope come soon. Do you learn a language at school? Maybe Italian, Japanese, French? What about Nunga? That's just one of the many local Indigenous languages from Western Australia that's becoming an increasingly popular addition in schools across the state. Take a look. This is the Noongar language. It's been spoken by traditional owners in these areas for thousands of years, and today it's being taught in schools. So some of the words are pretty easy to remember and all that, so it'll probably stick with me for my life. Probably like Kaya, which means two things. It means yes and hello. There are 68 schools in Western Australia that offer students the chance to learn a local Indigenous language. And it's estimated that more than 10,000 students in WA are currently learning one. 10,000 students is fantastic and to do such a big leap just in the last couple of years is important too. While it's got many people pretty excited, experts say there's still a long way to go when it comes to teaching Indigenous languages in classrooms. They say that one of the biggest problems is finding people who are able to teach it. You see, unlike other languages that are taught in schools, it's not as easy to continue learning Indigenous languages once you leave, because there just aren't as many people teaching them. It's a problem not just in WA, but all over Australia. And many reckon the government needs to step in and help meet the demand, so that we can keep speaking these languages into the future. Very good. Hmm. Well, we all know I love to bust out a tune, so what better way to introduce these next stories where the winner takes it all and the loser stands in Ready, steady, mo! And these guys here are hitting the pedal to the metal at the Lawnmower World Championships in Wiltshire, South East England. It's a two-day racing weekend in wet and muddy conditions with 16 races for all the different categories. So, why do people do it? I don't know why people still do it, but there are enough crazy people out there who want to jump on a mower, tweak it up and go hurtling round a field during the summer months. Now this is something you need a lot of speed for and apparently a big appetite to. Here in New York, they're celebrating the 4th of July, their Independence Day, with a hot dog eating comp. Joey Chestnut was the men's top dog eating 63 hot dogs, which is no surprise really, considering he has won the comp 15 times. As for the women's round, Mickey Sudu came in with 40. Guess what? That's not a human. It's a donkey. These donkeys are just dressing up as humans to compete in Colombia's Monacera's Donkey Festival. The festival also has parades and, oh, did we mention this? A donkey brain competition. Wowza, what a winner of a show, if I do say so myself. And we'll be back again tomorrow with more. See ya.